Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Demco base plate on a 2021 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. Now there's five main components required when flat towing your Wrangler and starting on the vehicle side we have our base plate and that attaches to the frame of the vehicle creating a structural mounting point for your tow bar and all the rest of your components. Your tow bar is the connection point between the base plate and the hitch on the RV. And the base plate also has tabs for our safety cables that we have here. So just like pulling a trailer, you wanna make sure that it doesn't disconnect. And if it was to, you still have these cables holding onto the vehicle. We have diode wiring, which is gonna transmit the light signals from the lights on the RV to the taillights on the towed vehicle, keeping you safe and legal. We also have our braking system, which is going to slow and stop as you apply the brakes on the RV. You also have this breakaway switch, so in case of a catastrophic disconnect where everything was to fail, it's going to pull this cable, applying the brakes on the vehicle, that way it's not rolling down the highway. Now in our case, to get indication for our braking system, we also picked up a stoplight switch. And something that I'd recommend to everyone is getting a charge line. That's going to tie on to your six pole, uh, trickle charging your battery as you go down the road. That way you don't have to worry about having a dead battery once you get to the campsite. Now this is what your base plate is going to look like when it's installed on your Wrangler. And overall, it's a pretty clean look. Really all that you see is where the arms attach and your safety chain loops, but it makes it nice and easy to be able to hook up your components. It also comes with a bracket that allows you to get your diode wiring hooked up as well as mounting up your breakaway switch. Now, while it has a pretty clean look while just driving around town, when you are ready to flat tow, you can remove your plastic caps, which is a nice little feature. It's gonna keep a lot of moisture and debris from getting built up in there and rusting it out. Uh, because this lives on the front of the vehicle, that's a nice little benefit. You'll then just take your arms, slide these into place, give it a quarter turn, get your linch pin in place, and now you have your mounting tab for your tow bar. Now, if you already own a tow bar or have your mind set up on one that you're gonna get, not to worry if it's not a e-trailer or Demco because these adapters are specific for that, but you can get adapters for your tow bar to be able to work with this base plate. Now, when you are ready to hook up your tow bar, it makes it nice and easy. You're gonna have all the mounting points for your components. So as long as you're connecting everything that is mounted up to the front of the vehicle, you should have all your components in place. So this one, pretty easy. Uh, we're gonna put our pin through and get our linch pin in place. We also have our safety chains that we'll attach here our breakaway switch, our diode wiring, and then just the other side. Now with this connected, we can see that our tow bar is nice and level and we accomplished that with a high-low adapter as well as a built-in uh, drop that we have on the, our e-trailer SD tow bar today. And it really comes down to the height of your hitch on the RV versus the base plate. And our base plate today, it's coming in at 15 and a half inches. So it's important to check the hitch height uh, measuring from the center of the hitch pin hole on your RV and determine between that 15 inches and your hitch, it needs to be within a three inch window. So if you need to pick up a high-low adapter, we have plenty of options available here at eTrailer. Now the base plate is gonna be a requirement for flat towing your vehicle. And overall the installation, especially on this one is pretty easy. You can knock this out and I would say about three to four hours. Uh, and it's not too terribly hard to get installed. It does require that little bit of modification to cut to make sure that it fits through your rock guard. But overall, this isn't too bad to do. So speaking of, let's take a look at that. That way you can follow along with your instructions with the video and get yours installed. So for our installation of the base plate, we are gonna be removing the bumper and that way we can get the base plate attached. And the first step to that is gonna be removing two plastic push pins. They're kind of sitting recessed um, on this kind of splash guard that goes into the frame rail. Now, as far as plastic push pins, there's gonna be slots on them. If you just kind of pry up on the center part, you can get that center section to pop up and then you can remove the entire plastic push pin. Now, throughout this entire installation, you're gonna have quite a bit of hardware that you're gonna be removing that will need to go back on uh, later. And a lot of times with your flat toe installs, you're gonna be doing all the components at once. So 
Keep this in a nice organized spot. It's gonna make it a lot easier when you put everything back together. Now underneath the bumper, there's gonna be a series of plastic push pins that are slightly different than the ones we had up top. And that's mostly just to get this rock panel off. So we'll begin by removing these. These kind of, uh, they have slots on them. So if you pry those out, you can still do it the same way that you took those other ones out. They're just a little bit different, as you can tell here. Um, so go along, get these. Now there's also ones that are kind of tucked up in these holes. They're a little tricky to get to, but you can kind of access them from the side here. So go ahead and get all your plastic push pins removed on the bottom. Now there's also gonna be two eight millimeter screws down here that attach our rock guard. So go ahead, get those removed. With those removed, we can set this rock guard aside. We are gonna come back later and trim this once our base plate's uh, installed. So don't push it too far, because we'll be coming back to this. Now on the back side of our bumper, we're gonna have studs that go into our frame. And these are gonna be an 18 millimeter nut. So there's two here, there's gonna be two on the other side. And then we'll also have four on the passenger side, making a total of eight of these. Now they can get a little bit tricky. You might need some extensions or swivels to get to these. Uh, but go ahead and get those all removed. Now as far as uh, if you're following along with the instruction manual, they're going to tell you to remove the bolts from our bumper supports that are on each side. We can do that after. The main thing is once you have all those nuts taken off the studs, this will slide out and it's a lot easier to gain access to those once the bumper is removed. But before we do that, we need to separate the electrical connector that has the wiring for our fog lamp. So on our passenger side frame rail, you'll see this plug here. Just go ahead, push on the center and get that to separate. Now it does have a plastic Christmas tree that kind of goes into the frame. So if you need a little bit more room to work, you can pop that out and it's gonna give you a little bit more leverage. Now at this point, we can go ahead and remove our bumper. Um, sometimes it, it really those studs will get pretty tight. The tolerances from the factory are not particularly great on these, um, but to get this to pop off, sometimes if you just kind of pull on the bottom and grab on the tow hooks, that's gonna be a nice solid point. And then you're just gonna kind of work this back until it slides out and then set your bumper aside. So with our bumper removed, these are gonna be the nuts that we're gonna remove. Uh, this is gonna be a uh, 16 millimeter. We're only gonna be doing the outside ones. The inside ones are gonna stay in place and we're gonna be reusing these bolts. So hold tight to those, but the brackets, once you loosen this up, it's slotted. So you can take those brackets and we will not be reinstalling these. So go ahead and get those removed on both sides of the outside of the frame. And where we've removed our bracket, we're gonna be putting spacer washers in place behind here. So the best way to do that and keep them in place is use a little piece of tape, just align it with that hole and tape that down. Once you have that in place, you can use a screwdriver, pen, a knife, whatever you have, just poke those through because we'll be running hardware through that. So we'll get the top, the bottom, as well as the other side. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and get our base plate uh, in place. And so have those bolts handy where we've removed it from the side bracket. And that way we can get these hand tightened in. Um, so having a little bit of assistance here is gonna help just to kind of get everything aligned. So just kind of slide this up. And once that hole is aligned, we'll just put this in hand tight for now, just to hold our base plate up. Next, you're gonna to wanna to grab the bolt that comes with the base plate and just test to make sure that it fits in that hexagonal shaped hole. Um, if not, you may have to grind that out. It kind of depends on Jeeps. Again, sometimes uh, they differentiate from year to year, trim to trim. Um, ours does indeed pass through. You may have to kind of move the base plate a little bit, but that's what you're looking for. And what we're gonna do is take our nut plate that we have here and slide this up and that's gonna create the mounting point for our bolt to go through. Uh, now, something I'll recommend, sometimes you get powder coat buildup in here. So test to make sure that the bolt feeds through before putting it in place. It's gonna make it a lot easier. And something else that we're gonna be doing is putting a little bit of thread lock on our threads here. So I'll go ahead and get some of that coated on here. And then this portion should be flat against the metal. 
So just kind of slide it up in the frame here. Now if you're struggling to get this to align, if you need to, you can go to this top portion, raise the base plate up so this is all, uh, you have a straight shot. And you can snug that down just to kind of hold that in place for you because this can get a little bit cumbersome here. Um, it's pretty tight too. So just kind of feed this plate up until you see those threads align with the hole. And then we'll just get this hand threaded on for now. And then we're going to go ahead and just repeat the same process on the other side. Now at this point, we do need to cut out the spots for our safety chain loops as well as the removable arm portion. Now in the instructions, there's going to be two templates. And the way that you're going to line these up, you're going to have the back side of your skid plate here. The center line, you'll see that this little uh, bump out will be kind of our, that's what our reference mark will be. So I try to put this line right at the base of that. And this is gonna go a little bit into this portion, um, but making sure this is centered up. Now they say you can drill this out and then cut alongside. If you have a Dremel or I'm using a multi-tool here, you really don't need to worry too much about that. We're just gonna cut this out nice and clean. Um, so whatever cutting uh, method you have, feel free to use. We'll go ahead and get this trimmed out. Once you have that cut out, there's going to be some plastic burrs depending on the method that you use to cut this. So you can take a file or even the backside of a knife blade works really well. Just kind of sand this down. It's going to live on the front of your vehicle. So you want it to look pretty good. Now, once you've trimmed this out, you're going to want to make sure that it actually works on your base plate. And it's pretty common that you're going to have to cut out a little bit more. And something uh, that, to think about too is the bolt heads. Sometimes when this sits back, it's going to make contact with those. So making sure that it's trimmed out. Now I ended up having to go a little bit wider as well as taller on both sides. And that way this slides over nice and easy. And this will kind of line up with those tabs. So make sure you don't have any pressure against here. That can cause it to be uh, kind of tricky to get bolted back up. So now that we have this cut out, and we can continue on. Now, at this point, you're going to want to put your bumper back on. And the instructions say to attach the air dam to the bumper. I found that a lot of times that can be pretty tricky because once the bumper's in place, trying to get this into a situation where you can slide this on is not very easy. So I would recommend putting this in place first. Um, that way this is kind of, you know, lined up with the bumper. At this point, we'll grab our bumper and slide this in. Now when sliding this on, best way to check to make sure it's fully pushed back is those top plastic push pins that we removed in step one should align with the holes up top. So with this all loosely in place, we know that uh, our studs were able to slide through our new base plate and that's really what we're looking to do. Um, so at this point, uh, we do need to tighten down the hardware since we had it loose and there's gonna be torque settings that are gonna be associated with those. So check your instruction manual for those torque settings. But at this point, our two bolts that we had over here will get tightened down. Now when tightening down your hardware, the new bolts that we put into those weld nut plates are gonna be a three quarter inch socket to get those tightened down. So with the base plate all torqued down properly, we're gonna go back and get our bumper stud bolts uh, or the nuts back in place. So go ahead, uh, get those threaded on and tighten down. So with our bumper tightened back down, we'll go ahead and get all of our plastic push pins in as well as the screws down here for our air dam. Now it's very possible that uh, uh, you may have to bend those tabs underneath to get the, to align a little bit better, but I'd recommend go ahead and get these top ones all done first and then you can get those screws in place. 
Also make sure that you get your electrical connection put back in place and snap together. Now at this point we need to put our safety cables in place and this is going to need to wrap around the base plate and then also structurally to the frame of the vehicle and that way if our hardware was to completely all fail it's still going to keep that base plate attached. So there is a body mount on the frame rail that you can wrap around and this can also go around our cross beam here. So the main thing is just loop it around, have a nice hold and then put your quick link in place. So I'll get mine on and I'll show you how it looks. So I went ahead and just kind of looped this up. There's a gap kind of between our AC condenser and our radiator. I then looped it around our cross beam and then use our quick link to get that together. Now, these are just there in case, obviously, of an accidental disconnect. So if it is loose and you want to zip tie this up, by all means, that'll kind of keep it a little bit tidy. Main thing is, is when you're routing it up, it's not going to make contact with anything that's moving. Um, so something you're going to want to keep track of is you got your uh, sway bar here and there are some belts and whatnot if you go too far up in the engine bay. Um, but I'm pretty happy with this, so I'll go ahead and get this zip tied down. Now at this point we have our base plate installed and everything's good to go. You just need to get the rest of your flat toe components installed. And a lot of times we actually end up leaving all of this off to make it easier, but on the Jeeps you really don't have to. You can gain access from back here to run your wires and it's pretty open, but you do need to get a, uh, a bracket mounted up for your diode wiring as well as some of your other components can mount up to this bracket. This is included with it and right where we put our plastic push pins, it is metal up there, so that can become a nice mounting point. Uh, it looks as if though our bracket, I might have to trim a little bit just to get it to fit. And then I'm just gonna run self-tapping screws straight up. There are bolts included, but the self-tappers will hold it in place. And then also once that's mounted up, you may need to put some spacers here to just drop this down. So you may have to get a little bit creative there. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna take a uh, step bit and just kind of drill this out directly behind this hole. That way when we run our diode wiring through, we have a direct route to go. And that was a look at installation of the Demco base plate on a 2021 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited.